Hi, I'm Jay Devon. I'm here to share my love for tennis with you and to help you be happier on the court. Okay, today's video is coping with the wet weather, the rain, how to be happy on the court. You won't be able to be happy if you can't play because it's too wet. So uh, this one is going to be about the sponge roller and how to uh, do the job so that you can have the court dry um, and ready to play as soon as possible once it stops uh, raining or, or what I do is I actually uh, follow the satellite image of the rain clouds and then I see when the rain's almost going to stop so when it's still actually raining a little bit I'll already start to uh, roll the court dry so that um, you know when I can see the way the clouds are coming that it's going to stop soon uh, the front is pass, passing or past then uh, I'll start rolling the court because the idea is uh, the quicker you get the puddles of water off the top of the court then uh, you know, the, the court will be, still be warmer, especially here in Singapore, the court's hot and then it rains. So if you take away the puddles really quickly at first opportunity, once the rain is lightening down, then the court will dry much faster. The longer you let the water sit on the top of the court, then the cooler the surface gets and then it takes longer before the court's really dry. Uh, so the, the first thing is that there's a couple of things. There's a, the scraper which you use that will just take the surface water off and then there's a sponge roller that will really dry it. Um, if you can't bring everything to the court, then I bring this one, my own one, to the court to make sure I've got one ready to go all the time as soon as I need and to make sure it's a better quality. So some of the things that you need to really uh, be mindful of is uh, what I do is I make sure where my student's actually going to play uh, from, that I'll make sure I do that area first and make sure that my student's side of the court is dry and not to worry too much about my side because I've got very good balance and I'm going to be fine. So. Uh, I'll make sure that I do the other person's side first and definitely the area where we play. The other uh, things to think of is where balls will uh, end up. So in the net um, and at the very back on uh, my side of the court where the ball's going to be hit that way. So I want to also dry there uh, later because when the balls uh, uh, hit the fence, if they're sitting in puddles, then it's going to be not so nice to use the balls when they're heavy. So another point is when I come to do the lessons, I always bring two sets of tennis balls with me. So just in case that one set of balls gets a little bit heavier, I have a, a dry set ready to go all the time uh, in case, which can happen where uh, it just finishes heavy rain and you dry and it might be a little bit wet on the sides. Um, so the balls might get a little bit damp, but then you've got a new set as soon as uh, everything's gone up. So uh, some other things would be that you want to have a better quality one that um, has some reinforcement here and make sure that uh, it's able to swivel because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a centrifugal force where I'm going to go in a circular way so that every time I move I'm trying to move water off all the time so it's really quick so very shortly after it rains very heavily I can be doing a lesson very quickly because of uh, the, this way of doing it and of course uh, the stronger you are and the more you push down on the, on the sponge the the more the, the water will come out in one rotation. So uh, it also helps to go to the gym to be prepared to do this. And when you do the, the circular motion, which I'm gonna show you, um, it means that because of the way I'm moving is uh, I can build up speed and keep moving because of the momentum that I go in in the circle. I see lots of people, they come in and they, they walk back and forward and there's a lot of time they spend that's not actually moving water off the court. So this, this way, once you see me doing the circle, then uh, you'll notice that I don't need to uh, go over any area multiple times. I'm always moving water off. And then when I'm doing this circle, I've always got to make sure I have a little bit of a, a lip or overlap so that when I'm uh, moving water off, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on, is there, uh, you know, when I'm doing this circle, is there water falling back into the area or, or am I doing uh, a nice circle where I don't want to, leave too much overlap so I've got to repeat the same area many times. I want to do uh, as much area as I can but I can't uh, let the lip go over. Other things are uh, when you're uh, first preparing it and the, the sponge is dry, you need to first put it in uh, some puddles or under the tap so that the sponge is all uh, um, soaked. So then when you roll the court that it's already um, you know, ready to sit to the surface when you push it and really move. So other things that I need to do is I need to buy a new sponge more frequently because 
unfortunately, the more you use it, the more it deteriorates. And then uh, how quickly or, um, you can dry the cord and how many times you have to repeat over the same area will increase the, the more the sponge uh, life goes down. So you need to uh, re replace the sponge. And when you're uh, doing the rolling, you need to try to see if you can make sure that the, uh, the roller is really flat to the ground. And once I was talking to you before about making sure that it's soaked through first. So you just do a little test to make sure that if I did this, that uh, there's no water coming underneath because it's too dry in some spots. Which is also a really important thing that I see is that this sponge here, it shouldn't ever be left sitting on the floor because what happens then when it dries because of the water inside and the force on the ground, this will no longer be flat. And if the roll is not flat, when I do this, instead of being really nice and dry like that so nothing's left behind, uh, it's going to be all bumps. So when I do this, water's going to keep rolling through, which is going to make it really hard to dry the court well. So it's important to store it if it has a hook and keep it off the floor all the time. Make sure when it dries, you try not to dry it in the sun. You try to keep it out of the sun when it dries so it doesn't dry quickly in an odd shape. It stays flat. Or otherwise, you can, of course, always store it like this. So when you lean it, that it's leaning against something, but the sponge is not actually being compressed. So the shape uh, remains really flat. Well, of course, it's round, but it's going to be flat to the court. All right, so then, like I said before, where my player will uh, be trading from, I'll always go there first and do the circles through. And when you're building up this uh, momentum and circular motion, then uh, of course, the longer you can last and keep going, then the quicker it is to dry the cord. If you get tired really quickly, then, uh, then you lose all the momentum and you stop. And of course, uh, that means you will have less, uh, less cord done in, in, in uh, the same amount of time as if you can keep going for longer. Then of course, as you're rolling, you have to also monitor um, when you're rolling the sponge along the ground, uh, is, is the sponge starting to become too, too waterlogged or soaked that when you're rolling that it's not really drying that much and it's leaving water behind, which in case that happens, that means it's time to go over and uh, move away from where you're trying to dry. And then you need to press on the sponge like this without pressing on here because that would damage it. I see everyone doing this. You've got to make sure you only press on the sponge so all the water that you've got there is being released. So then this will be a lot drier to continue from. So every now and then you need to do that, but as much as you can, especially if you go for the better quality sponge, you don't need to do that too much. And uh, you try to, as much as you can, keep going without stopping. Other things that are really important are, you're not the only person in the world. So when you're rolling a court, make sure you have the manners to roll the court in such a way that you're not pushing water to someone else's court. So then if somebody else turns up and they want to play as well, and they want to roll the court, then that means you haven't gone and put a whole uh, big river on their court. You should be trying to move it so that even if there's nobody there, you make sure you try to roll the water so that it's not going to be on somebody else's court. So if you can see here, there's a, on this court, there's a little bit of a gap between the bottom of the fence and the ground. So then for me, when I'm looking around, where will the water be able to roll away from without being on somebody else's court or without staying inside the court area? So that later when the balls land somewhere and they land in these puddles and they're soaked, is I'm gonna be trying to push it over to that spot so that the water can go into the grass area. So normally in the tennis courts, um, they have a little bit of a slope. All the tennis courts are not supposed to be perfectly square. They're supposed to have a little bit of a, a slope so that the water can drain away and there'll normally be somewhere with a drain or somewhere where, with, uh, where you can push the water to, to go out of uh, the court under the fence. So uh, sometimes there's a grate and you can push into the grate. Other times it's just a matter of going to the fence and pushing it out. So first is the, the playing area. Then was going to be the net where the balls may land if they're not hitting the ball over the net, which of course happens. And then uh, will be the back area where I'm standing. But, but from this angle here, we'll just assume that that's the back where I'm going to be uh, playing here as well so that you can see from this angle that, that that would be used as my side but at the end because of the angle we're on. So thing to do is I'll start showing you uh, what to do is when you first come in you want to make sure you're putting your hand at the very top here where it's got the padding okay and you're not bending down here like a lot of people do because you want to try to make keep your back really straight 
And when you push into it, you want to be pushing with your legs like this instead of, I see everybody pushing with their hands. So of course, your leg power is going to be a lot more than just your wrist and your elbow. And if you're bending your back down, it's going to be really tiring and difficult. So uh, the funny things are is when I come to the court and people go, wow, look how dry your court is and the other ones are like swimming pools. You know, what happened? Uh, and they say, oh, you know, I put up my hands and said, hey, Mr. Upstairs, just rain on everybody else's court. Don't come to my court. And I blocked it so it was dry. Or, uh, you know, they think this is really easy work because they see me doing it. And they go, oh, that looks really easy and good. And then I said, yeah, have a shot. And then they tried and they go, that is very difficult hard work. So you don't have to worry because I'm the one who's going to do this. But uh, those few tips when you're doing it is to make sure you're trying to really be upright and pushing your legs and doing this type of action instead of using your arms and bending down. So, all right, I'm just going to go through and start off the roll. So I'm going to come to about here. If so you try to pick a place where a good circle is going to cover the main area where the person's going to play first, because you want that main area where somebody's standing to be, uh, to be driest first. The part of the courts where you roll first will become the driest uh, soonest. So you don't want to start in all different weird type of places. I see people start from the net and from the sides is you want to try to start right where the play is going to be. So if we're going to be working on the serve and return or the, the ground strokes and approach shots, then we're going to be mostly here. So I'm going to normally always start in this area. So then here, pushing firmly to the floor. So then normally I would do a lot more than that, but uh, then I'm going to go a little bit out of the frame. So uh, just to show you how quickly it is to get through here, you can see my one is now leaving a little bit of water there. That means it's time for me to <laughs> replace the sponge and get a new one because there's a little bit here that's uh, not quite hitting the floor, which happens once it gets worn out more. And then once I've done this now, what I want to do is take this water out to the lip. Uh, release the water from the sponge a bit so it's drier, and then continue on. <coughs> then again, try to not have too much overlap. So as I said before, is that I would normally keep going a lot more than that. I would try to normally just keep circling all the way until the court's fully done one time, but for the scope of the camera, then I'm going a little bit smaller than normal and trying to show you the idea. And then I'm moving off to the side there. So when the sponge is newer and it hasn't got any deformation in the shape here, then uh, you, this court would look a lot drier than it is because there wouldn't be any gap. And then when you go over this, it would be uh, less times needed. But of course, uh, if you don't have a good quality one or the sponge is running down, you may have to go over more than once. But as you can see, it doesn't take many minutes to go around and take out all the water and then it's dry. So if I, if I need to, they'll just go through another time. So.
So you can see there that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> each time you go around over the same area, it will get a lot drier. And you push all the way through and keep going around. And of course, the, the quicker you can get the surface water off the top, the puddles, once the rain stops or almost stops, then the, the drier the court will be, so the quicker it will be. Here it's been raining a few hours, so it's not a particularly hot court. And that means that when you do this, even though it looks quite dry already, um, it's slower than it would be if it was uh, less hours of rain and um, warmer when you're, you know, there's no sun out, it's still overcast. So here is a lot drier and in this position here from going over it more than once. And the idea is to go around. But of course, uh, in a perfect world, um, if you've got many arms and, uh, and you're able to do that, if you go to the court, there's, there's this one, there's, this one is like meant to be for the finishing touches and to really dry the court. So this one is absolutely necessary to make the court area safer for everybody to play on and much drier so the foot traction is good. Um, but then there's another one where it just scrapes. So that one just for the puddles. So of course, if you have everything and, and you have more time than you have a, a scraper, you would go at once around in the same circular motion with the scraper so the puddle moves away. So when I do this, instead of moving all the puddle off at once, um, and the sponge having to work uh, over time is I'll be able to scrape the water one round first um, so that all the puddles are gone and then I can start with uh, drying the court where there's not actually puddles there so that um, you know the, the, sur the surface will be much better and, and safer to play. So uh, these are some of the main things that you should think of uh, when you're trying to roll the court is trying to make sure that when you're moving you're moving in a way that uh, you don't overlap too much, so you try to cover as much area as you can. You try to push a lot more from your legs, keep your back straight. Try to see if you can uh, uh, do this circular motion instead of, uh, I'll, I'll show you what a lot of people are often doing. A lot of people are doing this. So, so you can see that's the, uh, Sorry grandmas and grandpas, but that's the grandma and grandpa way of doing it. If you want to do it the cool fast way, you need to do the circles and you try to get some speed up as you're going to do it. So uh, these are really the main things that you want to try to do. So uh, a lot of times when people are saying, oh, how could we possibly play? It's been raining so hard. It's because I'm at the court and I'm ready to go and I really want to play and I'm looking forward to get the, the lesson going and, and help people to enjoy the game. So I'm going to be there ready to roll. So I hope you're ready to roll too. And this helps you if you're ever having to do this and you're not on the way to see me when I'm already gonna have it done for you. Enjoy your tennis, see you on the court, even just after it rains. If you like this video, please subscribe to my tennis YouTube channel so that you can get a notification by email each time a new video is uploaded. Also, don't forget to share this video with your friends so they can enjoy their tennis too.